Please remain standing while we say the pledges to our flags. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Our theme verse, Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today, and I thank you for all these families that are here that have supported us, and I thank you for the teachers in this school and what it's meant to all of us throughout the years, and I just thank you for all your blessings on us, Lord, and in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good evening and welcome to the 2022 commencement ceremony of Bethesda Christian School. My name is Ross Campbell, I'm the head of the school and I want to add my word of greeting to those you've already heard. Luke 6.40, Jesus said, the student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. At last year's graduation ceremony, I spoke about the meaning of a Hebrew word. It was the word Bethesda. It means house of mercy or house of grace. Uh, I don't actually know a lot of Hebrew. Uh, I know hardly any. I know shalom, and I know falafel, <laughs> and I know one sentence that my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Worley, taught me. He didn't just teach it to me, he taught it to my whole sixth grade class, and he taught it to us in the form of a song, which is probably why I still remember it today. Music is a powerful tool for learning. And uh, for many years, I, was, uh, I lived in Turkey. I was the head of an international school there, and at one point we had uh, 80 nationalities in our student body under one roof. It was uh, pretty incredible, but, but over all those years, the 17 out years I was there, we only had one Israeli student ever. I still remember his name, and his father worked at one of the, uh, he, he worked at the Israeli embassy there in Ankara, the capital city of Turkey. <clears throat> it was an interesting time for his dad to be working at the Turkish embassy, because Turkey is a nation that's 99 percent Muslim, uh, and here is a, 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 a Jewish man working there. Uh, the, uh, this was the year uh, 2011, and in May of that year, the Israeli embassy had a big uh, festivity to celebrate their Independence Day. And because I was the head of the school where one of the embassy, Israeli embassy kids attended, I received an invitation to this event. Uh, the embassy rented a fancy hotel, uh, they invited many dignitaries uh, to this event, and uh, so we, we showed up, my wife and I, and uh, there was high tension between Turkey and Israel at the time. In fact, the ambassador four months later would get kicked out of the country by the Turkish government. 
Uh, and so, uh, but, but things were building up to that at the time. And as we walked into the hotel, we noticed there were snipers, military snipers on the roof. And when we walked in the doors of the hotel, uh, the security personnel took our invitation, which we had to present, and they scanned it under a black light to make sure that the infrared logo showed up so that it, they knew it was an authentic invitation. And then once we'd been screened, we entered the receiving line. And there were all these uh, uh, dignitaries from the Israeli embassy who were lined up uh, to shake our hands before we entered the, the grand ballroom where this event would be held. There were about a dozen people, and as you go through the line, you say, thank you for inviting us, uh, you know, happy Independence Day, and all these pleasantries. The ambassador <clears throat> was in the middle of the line, and when I put my hand into his, this, this great-great-great-grandson of Abraham, uh, I thought, I'm going to say this Hebrew sentence to him that my sixth grade teacher taught me. And as I did, I, 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 uh, <clears throat> I said, Mr. Worley, I sure hope you taught this to me right, because here goes nothing. And I, I, I put my hand into his, and I said, Hine matov umanayim. And that's the first half of the sentence. And then as I was getting ready to say the second half, the ambassador joined me, and in unison, together, we said, Shevet hakim gam yachad. In English... It means, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It's the first verse of Psalm 133, which is our Old Testament, but it was his holy scriptures as well. And I thought there would probably be nothing more appropriate for me to say at this time of high political tension than to, uh, to quote a verse from his scriptures in his language about unity. And uh, I thought that was a neat experience. And as soon as I made it through the receiving line, I thought, thank you, Mr. Worley. And uh, <clears throat> I'm so appreciative for him. Actually, I saw Mr. Worley about six months after that when I flew to the States for a conference. And uh, you know where I found Mr. Worley? I, I went to my niece's basketball game, she was a sixth grader, and she played basketball on her middle school team. And there was Mr. Worley. He's still teaching at the same school, my alma mater, and my niece had him that year as her teacher. And he had come to support his students in their basketball game, still investing in the lives of his kids. And I say that story because that's just a, a, a small taste of everything that I learned in my schooling. You have learned many, many things in your years at Bethesda. Uh, some of you have been at this school longer than others, but you have had many wonderful teachers who have not only taught you a lot of content, but even more importantly, they have lived out for you, they have modeled before you what a mature, godly life looks like. Uh, they say that more is caught than is taught. And your teachers have taught you a lot, but I hope that not only have they taught you, but that you've caught a lot from just watching them and interacting with them. I think you're going to the best school around, and your teachers make it great. So I, I pray that as you leave here, a student is not above their teacher, but when they're fully trained, they become like their teacher. I hope that you become like your teachers. And speaking of teachers, I, I do want to honor one teacher before we get started with, uh, with presenting you with diplomas. There's one teacher I'd like to present with a diploma. Uh, she, on her own initiative, decided that she wanted to pursue one of the four R's that we have at Bethesda, which is rigor, academic rigor. She chose to pursue a master's degree. Not only that, she chose to do it in one year's time while being fully employed at Bethesda. I don't see how she did it. And managing a household, I'm told they ate out a lot that year. But uh, she did not receive her diploma until the early fall. 
and she did not get to enjoy a graduation ceremony. So this is her diploma, and I would like to formally, publicly present it to her now. This is a Master of Science degree, specifically in instructional design and technology. I'm very proud to present this to our very own Mrs. Ann Heathcote.
And now at this time, we'd like to recognize the parents of this year's BCS graduating class. First. First, we have Joel Stephen Abnauer. Joel is the son of Josh and Christy Abnauer. This is Joel's sixth year at Bethesda. Joel's activities while at Bethesda have included basketball, baseball, and soccer. His plan is to work after graduation. His favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Joel Stephen Abnauer. Alyssa Danielle Aldridge. Alyssa's parents are Scott Aldridge and Michelle Key. She has attended Bethesda for six years. Her activities while at BCS have included Writing Club, BCS Theater, and National Honor Society. She'll be attending Marion University to pursue a degree in nursing. Her favorite Bible verse is Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will give you rejoice over with your singing. Alyssa Danielle Aldridge. <clears throat> Samuel Joseph Asbury. Sam is the son of Joseph and Tammy Asbury. This is Sam's first year at Bethesda. While at Bethesda, he was very active in the theater program. His future plans are undetermined at this time. His favorite Bible verse is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Samuel Joseph Asbury. Caitlin Elizabeth Burke. Kate's parents are Don and Shannon Burke. She has attended BCS for 14 years. Kate's activities include theater, varsity cheerleading, baseball manager, student council, class officer, homecoming court, and the National Honor Society. Kate will be attending Lee University to pursue a degree in nursing. Her favorite verse is Psalms 23:4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Caitlin Elizabeth Burke. Lance Wayne Collins. Lance is the son of Mike and Jackie Collins. This is his first year at Bethesda. His high school activities have included soccer, basketball, and worship arts. Lance will be attending either University of Southern Indiana or Anderson University to pursue a degree in nursing. His favorite verse is Revelation 22:14. Now let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Lance Wayne Collins. Abigail Joy Cummings. Abby is the daughter of Mark and Angela Cummings. She has attended a BCS for seven years. Her activities have included class officer, homecoming court, and cheerleading. She has been involved in theater for seven years. Abby will be attending Boyce College, where she will major in elementary education and minor in missions. Her favorite verse is John 13:35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Abigail Joy Cummings. <clears throat> Holly Faith Doherty. Holly's parents are Scott and Alyssa Doherty. This is Holly's first year at BCS. She was on both the varsity volleyball and basketball teams. She will be attending the University of Southern Indiana to pursue a degree in nursing and then further her career as a pediatric nurse practitioner specializing in neurology. Her favorite verse is Isaiah 41:10. So do not fear, 
for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Holly Faith Doherty. <clears throat> Jessica Lauren Dotson. Jessica is the daughter of Will and Tammy Dotson. She has attended Bethesda for 13 years. Her activities have included class president, student council, National Honor Society, volleyball, basketball, softball, band, homecoming court, where she was crowned queen this year, and also stage crew for the BCS Theater Department. She will be pursuing her degree in nursing at Cedarville University. Her favorite verses are Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your, height, your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jessica Lauren Dotson. Ariana Isabella Ingman. Ariana's parents are Dwight and Arita Ingman. This is Ariana's fifth year at Bethesda. She has been involved with student council, writing club, worship arts, theater, and cheerleading. Ariana will be attending Anderson University where she'll be majoring in elementary education. Her favorite verse is Psalms 118.1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love endures forever. Ariana Isabella Ingman. <clears throat> Demonte Marquise Ferguson. Demonte is the son of Deanne Salatin. This is Demonte's second year at Bethesda. His activities have included basketball and baseball. Demonte will be attending Anderson University to pursue a degree in graphic design. His favorite verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. DeMonte Marquise Ferguson. <laughs> Cole Jansen Gearing. Cole's parents are Jansen and Kelly Gearing. Cole has attended BCS for 14 years. His activities have included class officer, vice president his senior year, yearbook, National Honor Society, student council, homecoming court, cross country, and theater, where he has been in five different productions. He will be attending Ball State University to pursue a degree in video production. His favorite verse is Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Cole Jansen Gearing. <clears throat> Casey Elizabeth Glodfelter. Casey is the daughter of Ed and Carmen Glodfelter. This is Casey's second year attending Bethesda. Her activities have included student council, National Honor Society, theater, cheerleading, serving as manager of both of the soccer and softball teams, worship arts, and choir. She will be pursuing a, a nursing degree from Indiana Wesleyan University. Her favorite verse is Psalm 63.3. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Casey Elizabeth Glodfelter. <clears throat> Anna Grace Gamora Hunsucker. Anna's parents are Misiel and Carrie Gamora. She has attended BCS for eight years. While at Bethesda, her activities have included student council, writing club, theater, and National Honor Society. She will attend the Crown College of the Bible to major in missions focused on American Sign Language and teaching English as a second language. Her favorite verses are Psalms 62, 1 and 2. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Anna Grace Gamora Hunsucker.
Zacchaeus Randall Gregory. Zach is the son of Randy and Amy Gregory. This is his 15th year at Bethesda. Zach's activities include class officer, student council, soccer, band, and choir, and homecoming court where he was crowned homecoming king this year. Zach also served as an Iwana leader at his church and a camp leader at Twin Lakes. Zach will be attending Cedarville University to pursue a degree in engineering. His favorite verse is 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Zacchaeus Randall Gregory. Jesse, Sarah, June, Head. Jesse's parents are Steve and Adele Head. This is Jesse's first year at Bethesda. Jesse plans to work upon graduation. Her college plan is currently undecided. Jesse's favorite Bible verse is 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Jesse, Sarah, June, Head. Annie Rose Heim. Annie's the daughter of Mark and Lauren Heim. She has attended BCS for 14 years. Her activities have included volleyball, cheerleading, softball, student council, National Honor Society, theater, band, yearbook, homecoming court, and class officer. Annie will be attending Cedarville University where she'll be majoring in political economics with a minor in public policy. Her favorite verses are Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Annie Rose Heim. <laughs> Matthew Jacob Eisenagel. Matthew is the son of Jacob and Bonnie Ozzie He has been at Bethesda for three years. While at Bethesda, his activities have included baseball, basketball, cross country, band, student council, theater, class officer, and he also he served at the Courtside Cafe. Matthew will pursue a degree in accounting from Indiana Wesleyan University. His favorite passage is Psalms 23, one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Matthew Jacob Eisenagel. <laughs> Matthew William Kappel. Matt's parents are Christopher Kappel and Sherry Atkins. Matt has been at Bethesda for two and a half years. He has been on the varsity basketball team and the baseball team while at BCS. His plan is to attend the University of Indianapolis and pursue a degree in exercise science with a pre-physical therapy concentration. His favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 1. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Matthew William Kappel. Ethan Scott O'Brien. Ethan is the son of Scott and Susan O'Brien. He has attended Bethesda for four years. His activities have included basketball, cross country, baseball, student council, National Honor Society, theater, worship arts, homecoming court, band, and choir. He will be attending Cedarville University to pursue a degree in computer science. His favorite verse is Philippians 1:27. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Ethan Scott O'Brien. <clears throat> K. 
Katie Brooke O'Haver. Katie's the daughter of Dan and Tracy O'Haver. This is Katie's first year at Bethesda. She has been on the varsity softball team. Her college choice is undecided at this time, but she plans to study to become a vet tech. Her favorite verse is 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Katie Brooke O'Haver. Anne Miranda Rashar. Annie is the daughter of James and Chris Rashar. This is her seventh year at BCS. Her activities include class officer, student council, cheerleading, homecoming court, girls' soccer, National Honor Society, and theater. She will be attending the University of Southern Indiana to pursue a degree in art with an interactive media design emphasis. Her favorite verse, is 1 John 4, 16. And so we know and rely on the love of God for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Anne Miranda Rashar. <laughs> Portia Ann Rule. Portia's parents are Dustin and Molly Rule. This is her 14th year at BCS. Portia's activities have included cross country, theater, National Honor Society, band, pet band, and writing club. She will be attending Cedarville University where she'll be majoring in visual communications. Her favorite verses are Hebrews 10, 35, and 36. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Portia and Rule. <laughs> Frank Nicholas Walker Slover. Frank is the son of James Slover and Christy Slover. He has been at BCS for five years. Frank's activities have included basketball, baseball, and choir. His college plans are currently undecided. His favorite verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Frank Nicholas Walker Slover. <laughs> Caleb Jeffrey Smith. Caleb's parents are Chad and Laura Smith. This is Caleb's fifth year at Bethesda. His activities while in high school have included soccer, theater, homecoming court, and 4-H. He will be attending Grace College to pursue a degree in mechanical engineering. His favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Caleb Jeffrey Smith. <laughs> Lily Noel Tabler. Lily's the daughter of Matthew and Donna Tabler. She has attended Bethesda for eight and a half years. Her activities have included softball, volleyball, basketball, and riding club. She'll be attending IUPUI to pursue a degree in teaching. Her favorite verses are 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. Lily Noel Tabler. <laughs> Carter Adam Thornton. Carter's parents are Jerry and Jessica Thornton. Carter has been at Bethesda for two and a half years. He has been on both the basketball and golf teams. Carter will be attending Marion University to pursue a degree in business, specializing in sports management. His favorite verses are Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Let your eyes look directly forward 
and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Carter Adam Thornton. Jocelyn Claire Vows. Jocelyn is the daughter of Matt and Jennifer Vows. She's been at Bethesda for seven years. Her activities have included class officer, student council, National Honor Society, volleyball, softball, homecoming court, 4-H, Indianapolis Children's Choir, band, theater, and worship arts. She will be attending Boys College to pursue a degree in elementary education. Her favorite verses are is Isaiah 4, 29 through 31. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Jocelyn Claire Vows. When one thinks about our class, the word paradox often comes to mind, or at least it comes to some of our minds. Others, well, we'd be hard pressed to tell you what that crazy sounding word means, even though we've seen it on various English tests since at least the 10th grade. But this just proves the point that we are indeed a paradox, because while some of us are so driven to succeed in our grades and sports and music and theater and Christian service, we're rarely caught standing still. In fact, a lot of people, including those closest to us, like our own parents, aren't exactly sure what we even look like at this point, since we're usually only glimpsed as blurs of hair and spirit wear and backpacks the size of young bear cubs and shoes. That is, when we remember our shoes. Sometimes we're so busy we forget that footwear is required most places. And then you have the rest of us who, well, we're chill, we're here, or at least we're here some of the time. We aren't overly concerned about, well, anything other than having a good time socializing and food. We usually remember to wear shoes, but if not, no biggie bro. Interestingly, it was one of those blurs that was the inaugural member of the class of 2022, Zach Gregory, who started attending Bethesda in K3 and got into trouble for running in from recess too early. We think that says it all. A three-year-old who wanted to go inside and start getting some serious work done for crying out loud. The teacher was not nearly as enthused as Zach to take the young'uns inside and gave Zach a purple frowny face as a punishment. <laughs> this sense of failure haunts him, to, haunts him still. In K4, we gained a mixed bag of classmates, a few overachieving girls, Annie Heim, Portia Rule, Kate Burke, and a boy who liked to pretend to be a sloth at recess, Cole Gearing. <laughs> This foundational year of our schooling will be remembered fondly as the year in which we performed in a play called Adam Named the Animals and Mrs. Tripp taught us the Tyrannosaurus Rex song. Some of us still remember it, remember it to this day. In K-5, we gained Jess Dodson and Caleb Smith. But sadly, Jess remembers this as the year in which she fell while, chas while chasing Portia on the playground and passed out. This was probably due to the fact that she was trying to match the land speed record of a Formula One car. But that's just for you. Even the most run-of-the-mill homework assignments were completed with the type of zeal most reserved for a doctoral thesis or the Olympics. This K-5 year was also pretty devastating for Caleb and Kate, who pretended to get married only to have Kate's mom force them to pretend to get a divorce a few <laughs> days later. Perhaps this is why Caleb proceeded to check out of BCS for a few years. 
In first, second, and third grade, we did not gain any new classmates, but we did watch the movie Balto. And Zach recalls our first grade teacher hab had a habit of squeezing our hands like really hard whenever we got into trouble. And once, when the whole class got into trouble at the sub, we didn't get our hands squeezed, but instead we all had to miss recess, except Annie Heim, who had to go play with another class. It would be nice to report she made some new friends that day, but actually, she just felt really weird about it. In second and, in second and third grade, not much of interest happened. We learned cursive, well, some of us, and such as the math machine learned our mathematics, Zach Gregory learned our multiplication tables. And oh yeah, there was a short stint back then, many moons ago, where the administration must have been in the weeds as far as staffing goes, and therefore recruit, recruited our future government econ teacher, Mr. Stafford, to be our librarian. <laughs> now, not to steal his thunder, but surely he must have been thinking to himself, what in the world am I doing with all of these rugrats and their colleagues when I could be watching the Yankees with my beautiful wife and lovely daughter or getting more bang for my buck working somewhere else or I would surely be making oodles and oodles of money and I could buy a red Corvette. But hey, if there's one thing we know, it's that if Mr. Stafford is willing and able to help out and put the puzzle pieces together for us, he'll do it. Moving on to fourth grade, where we gained sweet classmate Lily Tabler. And during the spring concert, we rocked the state, the state song, at least according to Jess, who never accepts anything less than her own personal rocking best. Fourth grade was also the year that Mrs. Titus experimented with alternative seating by letting us all sit on exercise balls, and several of us experimented with what would happen if we poked the exercise balls with our pencils. The result of this experiment, for Zach at least, ended in a chipped tooth. <laughs> Lucky for us, Anna Gamora wasn't too worried about the exercise ball thing and decided to join us for the fifth grade. Unlucky for her, this was the year that we dissected owl pellets and even made up a song about it. We can't remember it too well, but we're sure it rocked. And in sixth grade, we gained several new lovelies, Abby Cummings, Jocelyn Vowles, Annie Richard, and Caleb, who'd moved on after his divorce from Kate, came back. <laughs> For him, sixth grade marked the year that he hit his own eye with a fishing weight and afterward could not lift and, oh yes, yeah, see. When you're working on developing a Hulk-like physique like Caleb was back then, the need to see definitely ranked lower than the need to lift. Many of us also remember sixth grade as the year in which one of our classmates, who since moved away, refused Mrs. George's pink Bible because it was, well, pink. The boys in our class definitely have a thing about pink, which in our junior high years resulted in two different colored class t-shirts, pink for the girls and an oh-so-masculine green for the boys. Sixth grade was also the year that Cole just loved to yell hump day each and every Wednesday. <laughs> Luckily, he doesn't yell this anymore. He says it quietly sometimes, just to himself, for old time's sake. Which brings us to that festival of awkwardness that is junior high. In seventh grade, we gained Alyssa Aldridge and Frank Slover, and Ariana Ingman came along when we were in eighth, and it wasn't all bad. Some cool memories were made, including the Cebu from Veggie Tales becoming our unofficial class mascot, someone pulling the emergency handle on the shower in the chem lab on accident, Cole getting into a fight with a goose, his only defense was to assume sloth posture. And oh yeah, Anna got left in Ohio after a field trip to Kings Island. But perhaps what we will remember most about junior high was the time when all of us, overachievers and chill alike, got herded down to the office and told by the principal that we were the worst class in the history of the school. Perhaps sensing that she was on to something, Caleb took his dumbbells and left again for a while. <laughs> Which brings us finally to high school, ninth grade, where we gained Ethan O'Brien and our Spanish class developed a love for underwater basket weaving. This was also the year that our class had a couple of unfortunate accidents, one in which Kate Burke broke her nose during cheer team nationals and had to wear a cast on her nose. Yes, you heard that right, a cast on her nose. 
And during English class, when watching the climactic scene of Romeo and Juliet, in which Juliet stabs herself, Jocelyn passed out cold and clonked her head on the desk on the way down. Ninth grade also marked the year when the go-getters in our class took up playing spoons at lunch. Sadly, the game became so heated that at one point, Zach launched himself across a lunch table, causing the lunch lady to have a meltdown that impressed us all. <laughs> Moving on to grade 10, the year in which we gained Matthew Kappel, Carter Thornton, and Matthew Eisenagel really went over and above in order to prove himself zealous enough to fit into our ranks by doing extra summer classes during the summer, skipping an entire grade level. Needless to say, many of us were impressed, while some of us thought him completely insane. Tenth grade will also be remembered as the year in which the boys and girls teams won the soccer sectionals for the first time in the history of the school, and Anna played Julius Caesar in our Shakespeare in the Park activity, and several of us got the chance to pretend to stab her. And as if that wasn't weird and gruesome enough, we also had a fake wedding in Bible class, in which Cole walked Annie Heim down the aisle so that she could marry Frank. And oh yeah, 10th grade also marked the year that COVID happened and we met Lord Withers for the first time and missed the last quarter of school, which for some of us was pure torture and for those of us who find school a bit of a nuisance anyway, it was bliss. Our junior year wasn't memorable for a whole lot other than having to wear masks, which stunk, like literally, if lunch was orange chicken, and making an outdoor classroom in honors bio, and filming a horror movie in advanced fiction, and more importantly, Casey Gladfelter jetted in from overseas to join us. We think her first words to us were, hey squad, and Caleb also came back yet again, only he looked so different and, well, enormous. <laughs> We wondered if he had eaten the junior high version of himself and therefore possessed superpowers. But no, he was still just Caleb. And oh yeah, DeMonte Ferguson also joined us. He played basketball really well and had some rock and hair, but he never turned in his memory page for this legacy, so we don't know if he had any memories or not. <laughs> Which brings us finally, finally, to senior year, the year we'd been waiting for since we were clear back in junior high when we were dubbed the worst class ever. And even though it was very late in the game, we gained newcomers Sam Asbury, Lance Collins, Holly Doherty, Jesse Head, and Katie O'Haver. Luckily for them, senior year turned out to be pretty great all around, especially for those of us who came to school. We made bingo games and hunted moss with Miss Mack. We performed a couple of rockin' plays and traveled the Gulf Shores for the, our senior trip where we ate donuts and hot dogs and watched ne Nacho Libre and had a rockin' bus driver named Richie. We also pulled what we believed to be the best senior prank ever, since many of us threw ourselves into the task of creating mayhem the same way we throw ourselves into everything, full throttle. And even those of us who kind of glide through life, well, we had a good time with that one as well. So there you have it, folks, the story of, our, the, of the paradox that is our class. We've laughed, we've cried, we've eaten donuts and been squirting, squirted by skunks. We're looking at you, Ariana. Some of us stopped to smell the roses, and others of us plowed through it all with the intensity of a fighter jet. But if God had made us all the same, we would have been boring. And that is one thing we would never want to be accused of being. The end. Or wait, is Joel still sitting up there? Is he here? Really? He's here? Well, go ahead and come on down, Joel. Just find a spot wherever. It doesn't really matter, bro. Joel came to our class sometime around junior high, and for his senior year, he grew a mullet. He'll probably go on to make oodles and oodles of money, but we'll talk about that later. At this time, we're going to hear from four different seniors. Uh, each is going to speak on a different one of the four R's represented by Bethesda. Rooted in Christ, relevant in the world, relational in style, and rigorous in learning. Leading us off will be Jocelyn Vowles.
Matthew 28 tells us to make disciples of all nations. In order to do this, we must be rooted in the gospel and have a foundation in Christ. That must be the motivation. I believe that we need to build a strong foundation in the word, to be accountable, to disciple others, and to daily acknowledge that all things are for the Lord Jesus and through him. So many people have invested in my life. My dear church family has been so faithful to disciple me. Many have guided me through the ups and downs of junior high and high school by directing me to study and memorize the scriptures. Ms. McKinnon specifically has modeled the love of Christ by being rooted in him above all else. As she guided us through an immersive study at Bible, Bible study of Ruth, we learned how to dive deep and to discuss the beauty of God's scriptures together. I desire to influence others as she has influenced me. Ms. Mack, thank you so much for our fun tea parties, walks in God's creation, and lessons on lichen. <laughs> we understand that God's word alone has authority in our lives because of you. High school friendships can sometimes be fun, but shallow, quickly diminishing after graduation. However, the class of 2022 is different. The Lord has truly blessed me with friends who are committed to the scriptures and do not shy away from spiritual conversations. My classmates are open and accountable, willing to worship together. I will never forget when we sat under the stars on our senior trip. The bonfire next to the bay was so peaceful and everyone was in awe of God's goodness that day. We sang out praises to our king and thanked him for everything he had done, realizing that nothing was done in our own strength. These are the memories I will truly treasure because they revealed the one who is greater than all things. We are the body of Christ on mission that has grown from roots in the gospel. It is unique that Bethesda has many age groups in pro close proximity, which provides the opportunity to apply what we have learned from the scriptures. The Lord faithfully led us to invest in the lives of others through music, sports, cadet teaching, and theater. We were intentional during our time here, but our mission to know him and to share him must continue. In a few months, we will be forming new relationships, and that can be scary, but God makes us brave so we can take risks for him. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31 says, he gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is my favorite verse because it reminds me to remain rooted and to depend on his strength even in these new situations. I would like to thank Mr. and Mrs. Campbell for inspiring me to be intentional at my time here at Bethesda. You were committed to obeying the scriptures and have led me to do the same. I would also like to thank my family for their endless love and support. Mom, you have been faithful to help me grow in my love for the Lord. Dad, you have taught me hard work and compassion. Thank you both for celebrating the victories and challenging me to keep my ultimate focus on Christ. All of this is possible because of you, and I love you both so dearly. Thank you to my sweet but ornery brothers, Matthew and Lucas. Thank you for showing me that people are more important than goals. Matthew, your gentle spirit, your love for others, and your desire to know more about God challenges me. Lucas, your carefree heart reminds me to enjoy the people around me and to put them first. I love you both so much. To the class of 2022. Well, guys, we made it. <laughs> I treasure the memories we've made through sports, theater, and everyday life. We have survived a pandemic won many sectionals, performed amazing shows, and have impacted many together. If Richie saw us today, he would be so proud. <laughs> Continue to seek out mentors and friends who will challenge you to be rooted through your next steps. Do not be afraid to invest in people. Depend on the Lord and take risks to fully know people. Stay rooted in his word. He will guide you. The Lord is going to do oodles and oodles of amazing things through you, and I can't wait to see it. Fellow graduates, teachers, family, and friends, 
In the first few weeks of kindergarten, I remembered that as a class, we decided to tackle life's greatest question. What were we going to do when we grew up? Some of us dreamt of becoming scientists, artists, princesses, knights, and even rock stars. It was clear that our dreams had no limit. There was absolutely nothing that we couldn't do. It took until senior year for us to discover that it was no longer the question of what we were going to do, but who we were going to become. While at leadership camp, we went on a night walk and were given time as a class to reflect on who the Lord is, all that he has done, and all that he was going to do in the upcoming school year. It was one of those moments that you don't forget because as we lay there underneath the, the, a cathedral of stars, we came to the realization of how small we really are and how great our God is. But more than that, we understood that we are very small in significance as well. Together as a class, we realized that our relationship with Christ is exponentially more important than any career we could ever choose. And what was really cool about this was that the moment we understood the significance of our relationship with God, we as a class came to the realization that God has given us the gift of earthly friendships and communities to strengthen our relationship with him, the everlasting God. Not only has God given us the gift of friendships, but the gift of mentors. For my classmates and I, mentors came in many different forms. However, I think that it's fair to say that coaches play one of the biggest role in this area. Here at Bethesda, our relationship with the coaches is not limited to a mutual love of the sport, but a mutual love of the Lord. They have shown us how to imitate Christ on and off the court, and for that, I will be truly thankful. For example, Mrs. Folks has shown me how to live out the love described in 1 Corinthians 13 when it describes a selfless love. She looked past her own medical battles and saw the battles her players were facing. Then she took time out of practice to help us fight them, not on our own, but on, with the help of Christ. Similarly, we as athletes look to Hawk as a coach even when he is in the stands. From him, we have learned the definition of hard work and what it means to make time to help the people around us. And for Mr. Stafford, we were taught the importance of seeking God first in every aspect of our lives. And from Mrs. Vowels, we learned that the closer we grow in relationship with God, the relationships with each other will grow much stronger as well. To me, this is what Bethesda is all about. The family that has been created here is not from the people, but from the Lord. These coaches are just a few of many that have impacted my life and pointed me to Christ in that they look upon us not as athletes, but as an investment that is eternal. And as for the teachers, all I can say is thank you. The time and effort you've put into each and every one of our lives is something that we have not deserved, but you have never failed to keep putting more and more of yourself into your job and into your students. You've sacrificed more than we could ever know, so before we walk out of these doors, I want you to know that each time you encouraged us, it motivated us to push ourselves to the next level. Each time that you pulled us aside to simply make sure that we were okay, you made us feel valued and cared for. Each time that you cried with us, you reassured us that we were not alone in whatever we were going through and that you would be there every step of the way. Each time that you prayed with us and for us, you demonstrated what it looks like to kneel before the Father in confidence that he was in control. And by doing these things, you've developed, developed relationships with us that make us wanna do the same with those around us. Each and every time you do those things, you've pointed us back to the cross, and that's because of you that we're going to leave this place with the knowledge of who our Lord and Savior truly is. The relationships that Bethesda has allowed us to have here with teachers and fellow students has given us a foundation built upon the Word of God. During our first few days as high school seniors, our class chose 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 to set the tone for the upcoming year. It says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. During leadership camp, we were reminded of all the ways we are to love in the way Christ did through 1 Corinthians 13 and how hard this can be. However, when we returned back to the hallways of Bethesda, our eyes were open to the fact that God provided us Christ-like relationships through friends, coaches, and teachers to show us exactly how to live, love, and lead like Christ every single day. I pray that today we, we would not be a day of sadness, but a day of celebration. That today, each and every one of you would decide to make God the very foundation you stand on now and forever. I pray that from today onward, the Lord would use each and every one of you to build relationships with others the same way relationships have been built with us as we imitate Christ. And that as a result of those relationships, we could point them to the relationship that is eternal.
Good evening, family, friends, and fellow classmates. I am Alyssa Aldridge, and I'm honored to be here to share about the education, how the education at Bethesda Christian School is relevant. I remember coming to Bethesda my seventh grade year, and I was really nervous about starting at a new school. I soon realized that this school and this class is full of welcoming and loving people. I stand here today grateful to graduate with these wonderful people and honored to be taught by the teachers here. I know for me and many here, Bethesda is our second home, and I'm beyond thankful for the people that have been there for me, helping me walk through all seasons of my life. The people I'm surrounded by are like my family, and I wouldn't trade anything in the world for that. One of the things that I love about Bethesda is the relevancy of its teachings that has prepared me for the world and future ahead. This year, I took family and consumer science class, which taught me life skills like cooking and CPR. Econ taught us about leadership and how to make wise decisions with finances. In AP English, we learned how to work under the pressure of time to write an essay, which prepared us for college. These are just a few examples of how Bethesda has provided us with relevant learning. In the beginning of the school year, we went to Twin Lakes, where we learned how to be a godly leader in our school. One of the activities that taught us to be an effective leader was the class building act exercises that required us to be clear in our communication with one another. Not only did we learn how to lead well, but we also had time alone with God where we reflected on the truth of who he is and how he will use us in the season that we're in. The time we spent without any distractions helped us start off the last year of high school with the heart to love and lead like Jesus. Later in the school year, we went to Alabama for our senior trip with the mindset of serving. We visited RV parks and served lunch there. The senior trip as a whole pushed some of us out of our comfort zone when we would start up a conversation with a stranger. But those moments taught me that God can use a simple conversation to plant a seed or just bring a smile to someone's face. It was in those simple moments that we had together as a class that will be remembered for years to come. Again, I am so thankful for all the memories and lessons learned while being here at Bethesda. Whether it was a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a teacher when we needed help, or laughing so hard with a friend that we were crying. As we walk into the next season God has for us, we can walk confidently in knowing that we are ready because Bethesda has centered us on the most important thing. The most important thing is to turn our face to Jesus and call upon his name to guide us into our next steps. He knows what's best for each and every one of us, and if we just tune in to what he's saying, we can, be, we can have peace in knowing that we are right where we need to be. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. I can't wait to see what the Lord directs us in this next chapter. Congratulations to the class of 2022, we did it. Throughout the years that I've been at Bethesda, many of you have heard me share my life verse, and in fact, you've already heard it tonight, 1 Corinthians 10.31. It says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. I first heard this verse the summer before fourth grade at Twin Lakes Camp. This verse has guided me during my time here at Bethesda and has pushed me to develop a strong work ethic in the classroom and persevere in life. I also believe that Bethesda's focus on the core value of rigor has helped us grow as a class, both academically and spiritually, during our journey. Our teachers here at Bethesda have sacrificed their time and effort to make our academic experience one of rigor. And we, in return, have put in our time and effort to get to where we are today. For those of us who walked into Ms. McKinnon's biology room for the first time in eighth grade, there was a rude awakening. She put very high expectations on us and forced us to think critically. Her tests and quizzes went deeper than mere memorization. In ninth and 10th grade, we had Mrs. Vowles for Bible class. She utilized many different ways of teaching. It was not simply a lecture, but she challenged us with discussions and projects that helped us grow deeper in our relationship with the Lord. Also in 10th grade, those of us who took AP European history were in for a treat. 
We experienced history in a way that was new to us through challenging essays, projects, and tests. Um, the next year, in 11th grade, we made up most of Bethesda's first AP US history class. For most of us, thanks to Mrs. Myers and our hard work in Euro, we were well prepared for the class. The same year, a few of us took AP Chemistry, where we had the opportunity to learn from Dr. Bradley, someone who has real world experience as a scientist at Eli Lilly. And finally, this year, Ethan and I took AP Calc with Mr. Witherite, where we had to remember everything we learned throughout the year and build on our past math knowledge. Along with the rigorous experiences we had with our teachers in the classroom, we also had the opportunity to be involved in many different activities, such as sports, theater, student council, band, and choir. Through these things, we have learned how to prioritize our time because of how busy we are with all the commitments and opportunities we have had at Bethesda. Our time on this earth is valuable and limited, which is why we need to understand Psalm 90:12. It tells us, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Let's spend our time on things we like to do and with people we love, with the ultimate goal of making sure that our time is spent in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. In the same way, we are also to please the Lord by putting our best effort into everything we do. Throughout high school, it has been my desire to keep Christ as the center of my life and glorify him in everything I do, whether that be in math class, on the soccer field, playing my saxophone, or working with campers at Twin Lakes. I have striven to do my best to glorify God. As we move on from here, let's continue to work hard and put all of our effort into our daily tasks, not to please others, but to honor the Lord who sent his son as the ultimate sacrifice. As I begin my next stage of life um, and go off to work at Twin Lakes for the summer with several other Bethesda seniors and Ian, I know, that these, <laughs> I know that these characteristics are what we'll need to serve the kids and show them the love of God. Over the years, we have been blessed to have many teachers, coaches, and friends that have invested in us, but there are a few in particular that I would like to mention. First, Mr. Linville, for sharing his passion with music with me and being an instrumental part in the growing of my music skills in band and choir. It is evident that Mr. Linville not only wants us to be the best we can be musically, but also spiritually, as he encourages us to use our gifts to the best of our ability to glorify God. Next, I would like to thank Mr. Witherite, as we have in common a love for math. He has not only been the teacher of my favorite subject over the past two years, but someone who has been and will be my friend after high school. Next, I thank Mr. Stafford for how much he deeply cares about each of our lives as, and futures as students and seniors. Mr. Stafford taught us much more than just government and economics this year. He taught us numerous life lessons that I will remember forever. Now, I would like to thank my siblings, Hunter and Noel. Noel, you are very friendly to everyone and one of my best friends. I want to be more like you in that way. Hunter, I hope that you will be on the stage giving a speech in eight years when you graduate. I know that you will use your talents and personality to honor the Lord. Both of you, thank you for showing me what it means to have fun and be crazy. It can be a welcome break to my busy life. Finally, I would like to thank my parents for teaching me how to live a godly life and make godly decisions. Thank you for always supporting me in all my endeavors. You have sacrificed so much for me. Thank you for sending me to Bethesda. It has been an experience that I will always remember. During our four years of high school, in the wise words of Mr. Stafford, our world has rolled over twice, then it jumped off a cliff, <laughs> and is now drowning in water. <laughs> so classmates, as you go out into this broken world, I encourage you to live a life of rigor, using your time wisely and putting all your effort into whatever you do. Heather Laura Marley was born with her twin brother David on February 19, 1987, to uh, Larry and Carmen Marley, who were members of Bethesda Christian Church, Bethesda Baptist Church. Heather also has a sister, Rachel Marley, who is four years older. Carmen went to be with the Lord on January 13, 2005. Heather, David, and Rachel attend a Christian school from the time that they were in preschool to the spring of 1995. In the fall of 1995, the children were enrolled at Bethesda Christian Schools. Heather developed many friendships and was involved in extracurricular activities, including cheerleading, school, and community plays. As a result of the instruction of several devoted music teachers, Heather developed a love and talent for piano and singing. 
Heather loved to sing and would be asked on occasions to sing in church. Her parents referred to Heather as their songbird, since she would fill their home with melodious sounds of her singing and the piano. On December 17, 1999, while traveling to Florida for a vacation, there was a, they were in an accident which Karma, Rachel, and Heather sustained extensive internal injuries. All three were lifeline to Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. It was there in the early morning hours of December 18th, Heather went to be with Jesus. As a tribute to Heather's life and to assist a worthy student at Bethesda Christian Schools with their higher education, the Marley family formed the Heather Marley Scholarship Fund. Our prayer is that we will all keep the following verse before us, just as Heather did in her life. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And this year's recipient of the $1,000 Heather Marley Music Scholarship will go to Jocelyn Vowles. Lisa Marie Durham Berkey, my big sister, was both an alumna and a teacher here at Bethesda for over 30 years. During her long and distinguished career, she taught many different grade levels, landing at last in the high school, where she taught English grades 9 through 12. She'll be remembered by her students for many things, her speed reading ability, her vast collection of Converse sneakers, and mostly her unfaltering compassion. Lisa loved teenagers and understood that God was not nearly done molding them into what he wanted them to be. This is why she chose Philippians 1.6 as her life verse, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. She was that rare breed of teacher who knew how to challenge and love her students in equal proportion, and in return they respected and loved her fiercely. In order to celebrate her life and her passion for teaching, my family and I have established the Lisa Berkey Memorial Scholarship, which will be granted to a student who desires to live out Lisa's mission of reaching hearts and teaching minds in the fields of ed education. It is my honor to present the scholarship to two students this year, both of whom Lisa knew and loved. It's Jocelyn Bowles and Abby Cummings. One of our many traditions at Bethesda Christian School is the presentation of the senior gift at graduation. Our class has worked hard to raise money for events including homecoming, prom, and our senior trip to Gulf Shores. We were blessed with the funds we had with more to spare, so our class is excited to use this money to give something back to the school. For some background information, our school has had the proud patriot as our mascot since the very beginning, since Pastor Tyler established our school in 1965. Many of us probably haven't thought about the significance of this symbol, so I encourage the students and parents to consider what it means to them. A patriot is one who supports and loves his or her country, and here in America, we have so much to appreciate. Our religious liberty grants us the privilege of receiving a quality education that is truly rooted in Christ. We should show spirit and support for this extraordinary school. Like our country, there is no doubt that our school will go through ups and downs, but in both realms, we must remember our vision and what we stand for. A few years ago, our Patriot received a change from the original design, and while most images in the school have been updated, the entrance rug in the student commons has not. And considering the rug itself also needs improvement, the class of 2022 is happy to provide a new one. It will make a difference in appearance as we welcome more and more families to our school. Today, as our class shows an outward display of giving back to the school, but I encourage the younger grades, you don't have to wait until senior year. Invest in your school now, and especially in your classmates. Always promote your Bethesda patriotism, and it will ensure that our school family will grow closer and grow stronger. Thank you.
It is my privilege as principal of Bethesda Christian School to represent the faculty in presenting to you the class of 2022. Each of these students has successfully completed the coursework laid out by the administration in conjunction with the state of Indiana. Each teacher has verified the coursework and heartily recommends them to you for high school diplomas. Joel Stephen Abnauer. <laughs> Alyssa Danielle Aldrich. <laughs> Samuel Joseph Asbury. Caitlin Elizabeth Burke. Lance Wayne Collins. Abigail Joy Cummings. Holly Faith Doherty. <laughs> Jessica Lauren Dodson. <laughs> Ariana Isabella Engman. Demonte Marquise Ferguson. <laughs> Cole Jensen Gehring. <laughs> Casey Elizabeth Glotfelter. Anna Grace Gomora Hansaker. <laughs> Zacchaeus Randall Gregory. <laughs> Jesse Sarah June Head. Annie Rose Heim. <laughs> Matthew Jacob Eisenogel. <laughs> Matthew William Kappel. Ethan Scott O'Brien. <laughs> Katie Brooke O'Haver. <laughs> Annie Marinda Richard. Portia and Rule. <laughs> Frank Nicholas Walker Slover. <laughs> Caleb Jeffrey Smith. Lily Noel Tabler.
Carter Adam Thornton. Jocelyn Claire Bowles. I would like to all of us bow our head and pray to the Lord. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Our Father who art in heaven, you are holy. You are our great God, sovereign. And you are a loving God, a merciful God, full of grace. And we have seen today the demonstration of your love and your grace and mercy to all of us, and especially to our graduates. We thank you, Lord. Witnessing this brings joy to our heart, brings hope to our future. We thank you for raising good people, good young men and young women, that their hearts are filled with you, with your Holy Spirit, as they go into college, into work, into the real world, may you always be present with them. May you always guide them, that they may continue to bear fruits for you, to glorify your name. Oh, Father, protect them. The world is not easy to deal with, but you have equipped them and prepared them for that to be your witness, to proclaim your truth so that your name will be spread out all over the world and be known and be honored. Bless their work, Lord. Bless whatever it is that they have been given, the task, the gifts, the talents. May they use them all to pursue glorifying you and honoring you all the days of their life. May they be wise in using all the gifts, all the talents for your glory and to bless others. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for them. We thank you for the parents who love them and care for them. May you continue to bless the entire family. Oh, Father, we also ask that you will bless our school. The name Bethesda is a very good name the house of mercy, the house of grace. May this forever be the house of mercy and the house of grace. May through this, Lord, you work and extend your grace and mercy to young minds, to young people, that they may grow knowing you and loving you and serving you forever. Thank you, Lord, for the faculty and staff that work so hard. May you bless their life. May they continue to serve you and grow in their capacity in blessing others, in educating your students that they may know you. Again, we bring this honor and thanksgiving to your name, for you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. That concludes this program. You are dismissed. Please join us in the back for a time of photos and fellowship.